With the first step of this vocal booth build, I laid out the floor base necessary for the space required. When building out floor space, refrain from creating an even width and length dimension. An example being a 4x4 or a 6x6 space. Cubed enclosure acoustics are difficult to eliminate once produced. Glue and seal the interior joints of the base flooring prior to adding installation. If less than 1 inch plywood or OSB is used, consider doubling up to achieve this. Break over joints to prevent hollowing and build structure integrity. Keep an even layer of material across all outer barriers to aid with the consistent soundproofing. Adding masks to a structure is the best way to reduce low frequency sound or bass. Two others are by adding standard thermal insulation or increasing cavity depth between the walls. I selected to use a thermal insulated OSB half inch thick under a half inch of gypsum on each side of the 2x4 stud and filled the cavities with R19 installation. Glue and seal all OSB to frame prior to installing deck screws. Sealing the frame against the deck will reduce sound transmission between the walls. A thin layer of glue helps keep the installation in place while filling the cavities. Noise control solutions for flooring consist of an underlayment with different density material to broaden the effective frequency range of isolation. To reduce impact, the need for isolation is required, so take care not to over-insert screws, locking movement, and reduce oscillation. Screws will partly reduce performance. With this level of structural mass, a sound transmission class or STC rating of 50 level 1 is achieved as it stands. But considering this vocal booth is contained and surrounded within an insulated exterior wall enclosure and positioned on four movable two-ton capacity rollers, a STC rating greater than 50 is obtained when dealing with outside the building noises. Seeing that I work mostly at nights, using the space for storyboarding, ADR, and Foley, obtaining a noise level is no difficult challenge. With post audio and video software, this low cost build is extremely effective in exceeding the expectations of my workload. You can achieve high quality audio out of this build. When working with new Jimson board, an all-purpose ready mix joint compound to fill in the gaps and cover exposed screw heads is used. Using a putty knife first to push in the joints compound as deep as it will go for the first pass. Keeping a clean debris free knife is key to achieving a professional finished look when completed. Cover all openings and allow to dry prior to sanding and adding a second coat. Once sanding is completed, a wider finishing knife is required. This will overlap the existing layer and smooth out waves and pits within the finished surface. Again, keeping a clean knife and smoothing out the layer is key to a finished look. You will want to remove any noticeable imperfections in the drywall or mud at this time. Sand the last layer applied prior to covering with Kills Drywall Primer. This finishing primer will allow the first coat of paint to adhere. If you finish the joint compound correctly, then you should not see any joints when the primer is applied and dry.
The exterior corners are a different story and require a one inch paper faced outside corner bead. These come in several lengths. I use two eight foot sticks to complete four four foot outside corners. Prior to installing the corner bead, build up each side with joint compound and cut the ends to a 45 degree bevel. Continue to build up the outer edges of the corners. Using a putty knife, apply joint compound, keeping as smooth as possible. Allow to dry before continuing to the next step. Once applied with the first step, allow to dry and hold in place with painter's tape. This will keep the corners in place and provide a tear-free removal later. Using the larger putty knife, gauge out the space required to fill in the dip of your corner. This is the amount of joint compound that is required to provide a flat professional finish. Again, keeping a clean, debris-free knife will aid in the process. If you can see it with your own eyes now, you will see it in the finished product. Fresh paint will not cover the imperfections. Once dried and Kiehl's drywall primer is applied and dried, a fresh coat of paint is selected. I elected to add a sand texture to my paint. This will provide a styled look to my surface. Several coats are required as this new construction is without any layers. On the inside, I elected to lower the mood and cover with a blue tone that will match nicely with the brown finish workbench and selected colors of my sound absorber panels. Again, several coats are required. Along the lower section of the outside perimeter, I elected to install a bead board using cider pickets stained in espresso color and using a header ripped down as a foot and top to finish. This will match well with the barn red paint I selected. Once dried, I cut to fit each board staggering the ends. This way I will get full use of each picket during construction process. <laughs> 